All right, some breaking news now. A appeals court has said that former President Trump does not have presidential immunity. It was an appeal that he had made in charges that he tried to overturn the 2020 election that led to January 6th. Joining me now with more on this news and how it impacts the timeline of court dates set for the former president, trial attorney John Fishwick. John, uh, thanks for being here. How significant is this decision? Was this much of a surprise when we heard the questioning from these judges about presidential immunity? and when it applies? Marnie, I don't think the decision is a surprise. I think most folks who listened in on the oral argument expected the D.C. Court of Appeals to find that the former president did not have immunity for the acts he committed as relates to the January 6th insurrection. It's the old adage, no man or woman is above the law. No president is above the law, whether that's former President Trump or President Biden. And so I think this decision was expected. I think some folks thought it was going to come down sooner than it did. But now that it's come out, it will affect the timing of things. There's been a delay. But I think now Jack Smith will be scrambling, trying to force the United States Supreme Court to take this issue up as quickly as possible. All right. So how soon might we, we hear this debated? Well, Marty, that's a great question, and that's really the big question here. If it's a normal appeal process, this would not be heard before the and decided before the November election. But Jack Smith already has asked the Supreme Court to take this case up on an expedited basis. They listened to him, but it, back in December, they declined to take it up on an expedited basis. I think this time they may take it up on an expedited basis uh, and expect Jack Smith to ask them to do that. But that will be the big issue. Will they hear this appeal promptly or will there be a lengthy delay like a normal case and therefore they won't decide it? And if they don't decide it, Judge Chutkin is not going to go forward with her trial until there's a final resolution of does a former president of the United States have total immunity from criminal prosecution or does he have no immunity? And right now the decision is he has no immunity. Right. So if you're on Team Trump, uh, this is a gut punch, even if you were not surprised by the decision. How might they appeal? What will be the response? Well, the Trump team wants to do what uh, you know any criminal defense lawyer wants to do, which is delay. They will probably ask the D.C. Court of Appeals to hear this, what's called en banc, the entire judges on the D.C. Court of Appeals. I'm not sure that's going to get anywhere, and I would expect they would not hear this. And if they did hear it, they would do it on an expedited basis. The Trump team is going to tr decide to try to delay things as long as they can, Marnie. They're going to say there's no reason for this to be expedited. This should be done in a normal process, that it would be unfair to rush it. And so that will be their effort to slow this down. And that will be the big issue. Will the United States Supreme Court hear this on an expedited basis or not? And that will determine whether the insurrection case that was set for March of this year whether it goes forward in 2024 or not. So, John, if I'm watching at home and whether you're a Trump supporter or not, what's the big takeaway for the American public and how this plays into the other cases that the former president is facing? Well, I think whether you're for the former president or not for the former president, I think it is a good ruling, Marnie, that we've all kind of known and talked about through the course of our country's history that no person is above the law. No matter who you are, the most important person in the country is the president of the United States, and that person should not be above the law. This will apply to any future president. So I think that's a good day for democracy in this country. Uh, as relates to the, the details of these cases, it is going to have an impact on whether former President Trump faces a trial this year in federal court. Right now, this remains very uncertain. It is, it is unknown whether he will go to court on federal criminal charges this year or not. This impacts that, but we're still going to have to wait and see how it impacts the timing. But it's an important decision for the American public. No person is above the law. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Last question for you, John, as we're looking at some of the other criminal indictments the former president faces. Um, we've seen gag orders in some of the other cases. Is that likely in this case to come down from the judge? And, and if so, why? Yeah, the gag orders, are, seems to me they've become kind of a side issue, Marty. I mean, I think the way they've set up on the gag orders is former President Trump is not really allowed to say anything about witnesses or about court personnel. I think everything else is kind of fair game. He can badmouth Jack Smith. He can badmouth judges. I think that's going to kind of stay in place. I don't see any kind of significant change to the gag orders. All right. Well, we'll be getting a lot of reaction on this uh, in the hours ahead. John Fishbrook, as always, thanks for breaking it down with us. Nice to hear from you.
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.